What's up, guys? This is Cody again with another audio tip for the Exchange Group. Uh, just really quick for anyone that records in Audacity, Anthony Hayes shouted out and he wanted to know how to keep consistent levels with your voice. So basically what you want to do, Anthony, is boost low volume and compress high volume, and you can do that with a compressor. So before I start, please know that Audacity is a free program. It's not the most robust audio software out there, but it can do what it can do, and I'll try to walk you through how the compressor works. So um, go up to the effect menu, and we're going to use the compressor effect. And I've selected just a bit of audio here so you can see um, how the compressor works. Actually, let me play this first without the compressor so you can hear what it sounds like. Since I began mentoring leaders back in 2002. In this episode, you'll hear us talking about the critical difference between doing things to build culture and... So you can hear that it's pretty quiet. It was recorded very low. The compressor can help boost the volume of that too. Uh, so open the compressor effect, and I'll try to be as quick and brief as I can. Basically, this is going to boost volume up to a threshold that you set and squash anything that goes above that. So the general setting comes in at negative 12 decibels you can see here. This is a threshold you can adjust depending on how loud or soft your vocals are. Um, let's ignore the other settings for now. I'm just going to try to give you a quick fix, and we can talk more about uh, in-depth terminology later. But we can adjust the threshold, and it might be different depending on your vocal track. You want to listen to a variety of different ones and see what sounds best. And then make sure you have this down here, makeup gain for zero decibels after compressing. After the compressor is done working, this is going to push the level of your vocals close to zero decibels as it can without clipping. So in order to get a loud enough podcast that isn't distorted or clipping, uh, this is what you want to have, at least in Audacity. Uh, let's take a listen to what this will do to the audio clip. Since I began mentoring leaders back in 2002. In this episode, you'll hear us talking about the critical difference. So if you watch here up in the volume meter too, you can see when he starts that second part of his sentence, it's a little louder. It gets close to the red. It does not pass zero. Uh, so basically, it's getting as loud as it can without being distorted. I'll play that one more time so you can hear it. Actually, let's adjust the threshold a little bit. So anything that gets above 24 will get squashed. Let's see what that sounds like. Since I began mentoring leaders back in 2002. In this episode, you'll hear us talking about the critical difference between so it's audacity, like I said, there's not you probably can't even notice really a difference with what's happening there. Um, it it does what it does for a free program. So this should be able to help you. If anyone uses audacity, I recommend throwing this compressor on all of your audio tracks in here. Try to keep everything as consistent as possible. And this works well between different audio tracks too. So two different voices. Uh, if you get the compressor on there, and it will do do its best to balance them out. So um, if anyone ha has any software that they use besides Audacity, like GarageBand or Pro Tools or anything, let me know, and I can try to talk about compressors more in depth because we're limited with what we can do in Audacity. But hopefully this helps if anyone uses this program. Um, if I've confused anyone, I hope, hope not, but uh, comment below, and I'll try to answer as much as I possibly can. Uh, throughout the next week. Also, let me know any other topics that you want covered, uh, and we'll try to get through them all. All right, guys, until next time.